Good morning to one and all present over here. My name is Sai Kumar, and I'm handling digital logic circuits for the second year AEEE. And I am here to introduce the number systems that are frequently employed in digital logic circuits, along with some introduction to digital logic circuits. So, with this basic introduction, let me go into my video. So what is actually digital logic? So why, why, why do we are very much concerned about this? Because we live in an era of digital systems. We are surrounded by digital systems, starting from computer, keyboard, mouse, TV, and uh, whatnot, You're including your exercise machines and uh, microwave ovens, everything, uh, air conditioners, refrigerators, washing machines, everything are automated. We need not go and give them, keep on giving them a set of instructions to do after completing a particular work. They do have a certain sequence to be performed if a particular button is pressed because everything has been automated. So automation, the basic reason why it is ever pervading in this world is because of the uh, invention of the digital logic circuits. So digital, what does it indicate means? It entirely depends upon the digits of your number system. So we need to determine what is the type of number system uh, for which we are going to create a circuit and uh, what are the set of things that are to be kept in mind while creating a circuit. So as far as now, if I'm going to mention a digital circuit, it mainly refers to only a binary number system, which can understand only in terms of zeros and ones. Even though there are, number, there are, uh, there are circuits which can understand from other versions of number systems, digital by default, it refers to only a binary number system. So let us just see, how does your digital system will be working? As far as the digital system is concerned, it is not occurring naturally. The naturally occurring signal is nothing but your analog signal. By means of a dedicated device called as analog to digital converter, we are converting it into a digitized input. The digitized input is given to a microprocessor circuit. That microprocessor circuit provides a digitized output, then it is converted by means of a digital to analog uh, circuit into an equivalent analog output. So this is the way how do we process here analog signals by means of a digital circuit. So next one, we'll be seeing what are the different ways by which we can design a uh, digital circuit. We'll be calling it as a system design, logic design, circuit design, and finally layout design. So the number system is the basic by way which is going to control the entire operation of your particular digital number systems, digital circuits. So the number system, it indicates what are the set of digits that your particular designated number system will be supporting. For example, if I'm going to go with the digital number system, it refers the, to the digits zero to nine. If I'm going to go with the hexadecimal number system, it refers to the digits zero to 15. If I'm going to go with octal number system, it is going to deal with the digits zero to seven. And finally, if I'm going to go with the, um, ever uh, popular binary number system, it is having only two digits, namely zeros and ones. For example, several people who are very much uh, proficient in writing C programming language or Java programming language, when you are going to compile it, actually you are creating a machine code. A machine code is nothing but a combination of zeros and ones. The microprocessor which is present within your computer can be understanding only in terms of zeros and ones. It does not know what is the meaning of that particular quantity what you have entered. So then it is the entire uh, work of the control unit to uh, make the microprocessor understand that this is the instruction that has been given to you and these are the set of operations you have to perform and you have to send it back to the user. Everything will be taken care by a dedicated circuit called as a control unit. So if I want to design it, actually the very purpose of an engineer is to design a circuit and become an entrepreneur. However, maybe we, we are just uh, confining ourselves to just create, uh, just learning a subject and uh, reproducing it in the uh, comprehension, uh, comprehensive manner to the uh, examiners, but that is not the ultimate aim. So the very purpose of introducing the digital logic circuits to the engineers is to create a sense of design uh, thought process in each of the minds so that they can come with several new ideas. For example, uh, uh, 
uh, IBM, Intel, everyone would have not uh, come out with uh, such an idea if they were not allowed to design. So the design process only makes a man intelligent. A rote learning process does not make a man intelligent. So keeping in that mind, let us go with the subject. So digits are nothing but it's nothing but a code, digit, or a symbol, whatever name you can call. It is nothing but a set of um, symbols which a particular number system can understand. Radix or base, it indicates how many digits does a particular number system support. For example, if you take a decimal number system, it supports the digits between 0 to 9, which amounts to 10 numbers. So the base of the number system is 10. I am going to go with the octal number system. It uh, supports the digits from 0 to 7, which amounts to 8. So the base of the octal number system is 8. If I'm going to go with hexadecimal number system, the total number of digits supported is 16, 0 to F, 0 to 9, decimal number system, A to F, the six alphabets. So 16 digits are supported by hexadecimal number system. So 16 is the base of the number system. So what I'm trying to conclude from these points is that each of the number system will be having a base to indicate how many digits do they support. If a given number is, for example, they are giving you a number, for example, let us take 789 base 8. Is it correct? No. Why you can say 7 has been given, but the remaining two digits, a number is a string of digits. You cannot just take 7 alone to be a digit and conclude it that it belongs to a given number. You have to take it as an entire number. A number is nothing but a string of digits. So 789. So the base 8, if you see, means 7 belongs to base 8 number system, whereas 8 and 9 does not belong to base 8 number system. So each number system has a large digit and a small digit. So if you go with the decimal number system, the largest digit is 9, smallest digit is 0. For all the number system, the smallest digit is zero. So all the number system supports whole numbers, not natural numbers, whole numbers. Whole numbers and natural numbers, what is the main difference if you see means natural numbers, it indicates from one to infinity, whereas whole numbers indicate from zero to infinity. So all the number systems, they belong to whole number family. And each uh, number is studying by a string of digits. Where whenever, whenever you're forming a string of digits, each digit will be having certain positional values which are determined by the base of that particular number system. So that we'll be seeing it now. And uh, every numbers will be having two types of digits. One is the rightmost digit and the leftmost digit. So that is depending upon their positional values. The positional value is less for a digit. It is called a least significant digit. If the positional value for a digit is very, very large, it is called as the most significant digit. So like this only we'll be categorizing a given number. And uh, last one, uh, these are the different types of number systems which will be frequently encountering in digital logic circuits, decimal number system, binary number system, octal system, and hexadecimal number system. Uh, these are the different expressions, uh, these are the different uh, number systems and their explanations. So this will be providing you a concise idea of what are the different number systems, what are the digits supported by the number systems, what is the largest value supported by each of these number systems? Okay, so thank you for giving me the opportunity in uh, providing me this much uh, information on the number systems. In the next class, we'll be seeing about how to uh, perform interconversion between the commonly used number systems. Thank you.